Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, and we're gonna talk about a really cringy new marketing campaign from Patreon trying to lure creators back to the platform. I don't know what is going on here, if they're having a bad year or what, but it seems like they're trying to chase the creators that they effectively chased away over the last couple of years. So we're going to talk about that. Before we get into it, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. We're over 100,000 subs. Thank you for the support, guys. It really means a lot uh, to us. And no, we don't have a Patreon. We don't have a Patreon account. Uh, the reason we don't have a Patreon account is that about a year and a half ago, Patreon took it upon itself to determine what kind of users it wanted on its platform, what kind of creators it wanted to support. They were randomly banning creators for violating their terms of service, their very nebulous terms of service, but actually not on their platform. Obviously, a lot of people remember the situation with Sargon, the controversial YouTuber that was uh, banned from Patreon for using the N-word uh, as an example, not that he was actually calling people that, but as an example of what he would consider to be hate speech on another person's YouTube channel, and Patreon decided they were going to take his, his Patreon down. Um, they just said, hey, you're gone. You're gone, and they cut him off from about $12,000 a month. And we've seen some other stuff in recent memory, uh, recent, very recently, like in the last couple weeks, that there's some weirdness going on at Patreon regarding anime artists. If you draw characters that they perceive to be underage, um, they might kick you off the platform or take the artwork down. Again, they're, they've got their people sort of out there policing the content. Meanwhile, people will point out that Patreon has some really questionable stuff that just goes completely under the radar. Um, you know, there, there were people that were, uh, advocating for violence and they were allowed to stay on Patreon. But if, if you draw lewd anime characters or you, uh, uh, say the wrong things, Patreon, particularly this Jacqueline Hart, she will, she will kick you off the platform. Uh, so Patreon must be hurting, right? Cause I just saw this on Facebook and I was going to do another video. I wasn't even going to talk about Patreon. Uh, we haven't talked about Patreon in a while. Well, I guess it was last month we talked about with the anime situation, but it's not something we, we think about because we don't have an account with them. Uh, although now I got to tell you with the channel being the size it is, you know, sometimes it's tempting, but I, I don't think we're going to use them. But they put this, uh, this website up, creativityovereverything.com. Patreon, this is what they're going to tell you they're going to do for you, right? What if we cut the bullshit? What if we cut the bullshit? Watch the movie. The system for creative people is broken. It puts algorithms over ideas, quantity over quality, what's easy to sell over what's actually good. It puts money, brands, and just about everything else over the people who actually make the things. Bullshit! <laughs> that would be Geeky's contribution. Yes, yes, this, uh, this commercial is bullshit. People say that's just the way it is. We say, fuck that! Oh, what? what? That, makes it, that makes it edgy. That's edgy. Here's an idea. Let's put creativity over everything because they're your ideas. It's your work that captivates audiences, inspires conversation, and builds a community. It's time to ditch the old ways. Let your fans give you the freedom and stability you need to do to do your best creative work. It's not rocket science. It's just, a, it's just way better. It's way better with everything going on in the world. We need creativity more than ever. Let's celebrate those who are paving their own path as Patreon pulls people, kicks people off the platform for nebulous reasons. I say fuck that. Geeky says fuck that. Sorry, Mom. So I got to tell you, it's really hard to take Patreon seriously. And this is, this is a very cringy, how you doing, fellow kids? How you do? How you doing? They are kind of a, a commercial. Um, they put this out on Twitter and it landed with a thud. In fact, they only got one comment after a couple hours. Of Reminds me of how you banned Sargon for having a random video on another platform that wasn't ever published on Patreon or had any Patreon links. Remember that? Did you change in any way since then, Patreon? No, no, I don't think they did. 
So I, I actually put this up on Clownfish TV. I put the screenshots up and we got actually got more interaction on that than Patreon got on uh, their their trailer. And, uh, you know, it's the kind of comments you would expect. Uh, they want to be curators. That's always a bad idea. Uh, they selectively ban people for offsite behavior. Is Patreon going to say cartoon characters playing musical instruments is a euphemism for having a relationship with a minor? Uh, would never support Patreon in any way. Yeah, here we go. Exactly. Um, they're being edgy. They're so edgy. So let's let's give you a little history, a little history lesson here that, that we have with Patreon. We actually were with Patreon from the very beginning. We were actually recruited by Patreon when we had a, a fairly popular webcomic. And Patreon at the beginning basically banked on the audiences that people built on their own. And they wanted to monetize your audience to build their platform. And uh, one of the things we ran into early on with Patreon was so many people started using it that they would tell you, you know, hey, we can't support everybody, but please give us more free content. That's that's the webcomic business model. Please give us more free. I, I can't possibly give money to everybody. But golly, um, if you're late with with your free pages, we're going to yell at you uh, for that. <laughs> but anyway. Um, so we were sort of we were sort of recruited to be evangelists for Patreon. And uh, if you asked me four or five years ago what I thought of the platform, I would have told you they were actually pretty solid. But there's been a lot of really questionable decisions with Patreon over the last couple of years. And frankly, YouTube is basically doing everything that Patreon does with their uh, subscription service now. Twitch is doing the same thing Patreon did. Patreon really, unless you're uh, doing content that can't be, you know, isn't monetized through YouTube or Twitch or some other platform, you know, there really is no purpose for it. I mean, and what they're doing, the subscription service, you can do it yourself. Web comics creators were doing it themselves, just using uh, PayPal and recurring payments and that sort of thing. So it really, you know, I, I just don't really see a purpose current year. And apparently a lot of other people are starting to look at it this way too. Now, the interesting thing about this is this is not coming from a place of being genuine, in my opinion, because we know that Patreon uh, went on a banning spree, and apparently this, this sort of thing is still happening on the platform where they're sort of uh, reaching beyond the platform itself to see what you do elsewhere on the internet. Uh, there was one anime artist, as, as I recall, uh, from the other video that they wanted to go through their Google Drive to make sure that their artwork was clean. You know, to make sure that wait, they were. Wait, Patreon wanted to go through their drive. Yes. You know what I say? Fuck that. Sorry, mom. Yeah, this this message here from uh, Kakume, uh, Patreon. Hi there. There's still a lot of links where you haven't allowed access. Please allow access to all the links already shared via private messages, not only to the ones that we requested via the Google Drive. Please fulfill the request in the next 24 hours. I'll have to place a temporary suspension on your account until we have the assurance that the content you're sharing is within our community guidelines. Update as requested and let me know when you've done so. Um, this is coming from Patreon. This was just in February. In February, Patreon was policing the content because they want to make sure that your your uh, lewd anime art is, is of age. Um, so, so basically they're desperate because everybody's leaving because they're being effing ridiculous. Yes. And now they're trying to be like, hey there, fellow kids. Yep. You don't need things like algorithms or, you know, you know, people that pay you. No, just cut the Patreon. You'll suddenly make all kinds of money because you're the creator. Yeah, that's, that's what they're... That's how the world works. No, that's not how the world works. And I, I think it is desperation because here, Patreon just, uh, let's see, when was this? Uh, last year. Jack Conte from Patreon said that they're not sustainable. He flat out said they're not sustainable and they lost a lot of creators uh, because of the situation with Sargon. Like you don't have to agree with Sargon. I don't even watch Sargon. I don't even know the extent of the kind of content. I get the basic gist of what he does, but I don't know exactly the kind of content he creates, but there are so many other people that were offended because Patreon felt that they had the right to go around the internet uh, off of Patreon and police everything that you were doing, police your speech, police your artwork, that they jumped ship. And they took a lot of subscribers with them. They took a lot of money with them. And they weren't all alt-right Yahtzees. A lot of them were pretty middle-of-the-road creators that were like, yeah, you don't have the right uh, to do this, Patreon. You're not a publisher. You're supposed to be a payment processor. That's what we signed up for. 
was to have you be a payment processor, make make getting donations from fans easier. And they overstepped, they overreached. Um, so what they tried to do last year was they wanted to go big. They were going to create like Patreon Pro and they were gonna be, or the premium service, and they were gonna be for like super creators who had you know thousands and thousands of followers and they needed help with all of this and they were going to charge you like nine percent i don't know what's going on with that apparently that didn't work out very well because literally anybody can create the kind of uh, payment processor thing that patreon has on their own website it's ridiculous you really don't need them and not for the amount of money that they're asking um again when they first came out i thought they were a great solution uh, but they've definitely, definitely overreached. They've overstepped, and a lot of people have left them. Back in 2017, Patreon changed their their tiers, their fees, and they basically would charge people more than what they were pledging for. So if they were pledging for a buck, they'd actually charge people uh, like a buck fifteen or whatever it was, you know. And it was ridiculous. It was confusing. They lost a lot of people back then. And then a year later, the bullshit happened with Sargon. And Patreon has been burning bridges with creators. Uh, they've been burning bridges with creators for the last couple of years now. I don't think they're creator friendly. I think this whole thing is a last ditch effort to try to, uh, I guess, appeal to the creators that haven't heard about Patreon and their really nebulous practices. And again, this is coming from someone who was a Patreon evangelist. You know, we were, we literally were, were uh, brought in, recruited by Patreon back in 2013 to help bring webcomics people over to the platform. And it was great back in the day, but in the last couple of years, uh, they've just, they've absolutely overstepped. And the problem is they have to prove to you what they're bringing to the table. If all they're doing is taking money, right? All they're doing is taking money. They don't have the right to tell you what you can and can't make. You know, especially if it's off platform. I mean, I, I suppose they can tell you, you can't put this kind of stuff on our servers, but if you're doing stuff off site, you're doing stuff on other people's YouTube channels, they have no damn right to tell you what to do. And the thing is, is that uh, a lot of this content doesn't violate Google's terms of service. It doesn't violate YouTube's terms of service, but Patreon wants to be the moral authority. Um, and they just want to take a cut of your money. You don't need them. Uh, you know, and like I said, we've been very tempted before to start a Patreon. We were actually just talking about Patreon earlier tonight, you know, and I think with our audience, we probably would do okay, but, uh, I just, I can't support them. I I'm sorry. I think that they've, they've nuked the bridge with a lot of creators and this whole marketing campaign just feels very, very desperate. So I don't know where they're going to be in a couple of years. I don't think, especially with YouTubers, they're not necessary. YouTube has uh, a much better system in place on its platform. You don't have to leave the ecosystem. You only have to worry about YouTube's terms of service, which, you know, people have enough of a problem with that as it is. But uh, I don't want another person involved, another company involved who, uh, you know, we have to think about, like, is this going to piss off Patreon? Are we going to lose our income because Patreon might, 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 get their panties in a twist about something we said or did in a private chat on another platform, you know, that's what you have to worry about with them. So I'm going to wrap this one up. Uh, I don't think, uh, you know, this is going to go the way they think it's going to go, but it does seem very, very desperate. All right. Talk to you later. Hey guys, thanks for watching clownfish TV. Please consider supporting the channel. Go to clownfish support.com. That's clownfish support.com. And if you want to join our community, go to clownfishtalk.com. That's clownfishtalk.com. Please subscribe, ring the bell for notifications. We will talk to you next time.